yesterday I had a question from someone, a silly question, very silly question. Someone asks me, will we be allowed to steal in Jannah? I mean, how far can your mind go? To be honest with you, how far can your mind go? Will you be allowed to kill in Jannah and steal in Jannah? Because if you can do anything there, like Allah says, you will be able to do anything. So I said, the pure mind will never ever think in those lines, on those lines in that direction. Never. My brothers and sisters, when divorce happens, it's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Perhaps it is a door for you to then get to someone else. Had you not been through your first relationship, you would never have gotten to this much, much better person that you subsequently got married to. See, I see a lot of people nodding here. Mashallah, what's going on here, guys? May Allah grant us ease. Allah open our doors. But the moral is never give up. We go through challenges. We go through hardship. Let's look forward. Let's progress. People sit and say, I'm going to fix this ex of mine. You know what? Just move on. By making someone else's life difficult, it's not going to make your life easy. Not at all. You want ease? Close a chapter. Open a new one. Let's move forward. Thank Allah. Beautiful relationship. And that's more. May Allah grant us goodness. So this is it. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ met with Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu when he came to Medina and he wanted to declare his shahada. You know who Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhuma was? He had caused a lot of damage against the Muslims, especially in Uhud. He was well known. And so he says, O Messenger وسلم, I've got a problem. The issue is, you know what I've done against Islam and the Muslims. I'm about to accept Islam. What's going to happen? He wants to know. As Allah teaches, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told him, Ya Khalid, Inna al-Islam ma yajubbu ma qabla. Oh Khalid, Islam will delete whatever happened. The bad that you did in the past. The same way Tawbah deletes the past. Also, if you were to revert or convert to Islam, your past bad is deleted. The good carries with it. You know, they say when you go for Hajj, you return as pure as the day you were born. Do you know in reality, it is even purer than that? Why? Because that purity is referring to sinlessness. That's what it's referring to. It's not referring to zero on your slate. When the Prophet ﷺ said as pure as the day you were born, he means no sins next to your name. He doesn't mean nothing next to your name. Evidence of it is, what about all the good I did before I went for Hajj? It remains. Do you get the point? So the good remains, the bad is formatted, gone. This is something amazing. Whenever we talk of Hajj and Tawbah, we must remember, yes, it deletes, but it doesn't make you, you know, they say, I'm starting on a clean page. You're starting on a page that already has so much of goodness on it because not only is it clean, but it's clean from sin. It's full of the goodness you did. Allah says, if you changed your life, then we're going to bring back the bad. Uh oh. Uh oh. Allah says in the Quran, if you change your life, illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan salihan. Three conditions. You make tawbah. Tawbah means to return to Allah. What's the difference between istighfar and tawbah? Istighfar is to ask Allah's forgiveness, tawbah is to return to Allah by changing your ways. That's the difference. Tawbah is more loved by Allah because it is broader than istighfar. Istighfar, I said, oh Allah, forgive me. Tawbah is now my life changed. That's the difference. So Allah says, those who made that tawbah, they returned to me. And they believe, they worked on their connection with Allah, their belief, their iman. And thirdly, they did good deeds. Allah says, we're going to bring back those bad deeds. And we're going to convert them into good deeds on the scale simply because this person could have done the bad, but they didn't because of their love of me and their connection with me. So Allah says, because of that, I mean, look, a person who is on intoxicants, may Allah protect us and our offspring. A person on intoxicants who says, oh Allah, forgive me. And then the intoxicants are still available. But he says, I'm not doing this anymore. Allah says, we're going to bring all of that back and convert it. You know why? You only quit it for us. Nothing else. You could have done it. You can still do it. But because you love us and you know we said it's wrong and you did not do it, we love that action so much. We're going to show you. Subhanallah. 
That is Allah. So this is the type of relationship we must develop with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He will assist. Days come in our lives when my beloved brothers and sisters, we are so low that we feel, where is Allah? Do you know that the messengers before us and the pious people before us, they used to ask Allah, Oh Allah, when is your help going to come? They were shaken, they were tested left, right and center until the messenger and the people around him, with him, they said, when is the help of Allah going to come? Allah says, be patient. Allah, inna nasr Allahi qari. Be patient. Allah's help is near. Allah's help is near. I remember sitting with one scholar and he said, every dua is heard by Allah. Every single dua is heard by Allah. It's a matter of time for that dua to come and plug in. Some people it's a few days, some people it's months, some people it's years. Don't ever think that Allah did not accept your dua. Never. All of us, if you sit and think about some duas you've made in your life that happened five years later, it happened 10 years later, but you don't realize it came. It definitely came when the time was right. That's Allah's plan. Trust Allah. We were talking about Jannah. Sometimes we tend to forget that we need to work towards Jannah rather than arguing about what we're going to be getting in Jannah. Like I say, look at the path. You can see it's there. You know it's there. And you know the destination is also punched in. You just follow the path. Don't worry about now when I get there, this, when I get there, that. The other day I took my children somewhere and I punched it on the GPS. And we are following the GPS. It says turn left. It says turn right. It says continue. We did exactly that. Knowing in our hearts that, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to get there. And when we get there, we'll see what there is. There might be restrictions. They might not. They might not even let us in. It might be closed, even though it says it's open because, you know, times have changed, right? Wallahi, our conviction in the GPS of Allah should be far stronger than that. Far stronger. Don't worry what you're going to get. I would never bother about what exactly I'm going to get in Jannah. What I'm bothered about is for me to get there. That's all. And that should be the case with all of us. Worry about getting there. They say, even if you are the last person to enter Jannah, you should be excited. You should, hey, I made it. Subhanallah. No matter where, what? Allahu Akbar. I have little children ask me sometimes, you know, if I'm in Jannah on one level and another person is in Jannah on another level and I wish to meet them or they wish to meet me, what will happen? I said, Allah will make it happen in a way that I can't explain to you. But inshallah, when we get there, we'll just nod our heads and say, hey, it happened. You see, I don't know. I just know it will happen. And I know that Allah can keep you in a certain way. You know, there's a very interesting uh, uh, hadith that comes to my mind. A very interesting. It says, whoever has had intoxicants, meaning that whoever has had the, the intoxicating wines of the dunya will not be having the wines in Jannah. Meaning, say they are forgiven and they change their lives and whatever. So now here comes a man. He says, hey, I had a bad life in the past. I used to drink. And you know, now I've changed my life and inshallah I'm looking forward to Jannah, but why won't I have the alcohol, meaning the, the, the wines, it's called wines, it's not intoxicating. The one in Jannah is not intoxicating. Why won't I have it in Jannah? Imagine I'm, it's going to be something that I'm going to want. And when I want it and Allah is going to say no, doesn't it negate another, another verse of the Quran which says, once you get into Jannah, you get what you want. So I said the best explanation of the ulama is something simple. Allah removes from your entire system even the thought of it. You won't think of it. I mean, if you loved something and you got into a place where there's something billions of times better than that, would you even think of that? You wouldn't even want it. It won't even cross your mind perhaps. One day, years later in the dunya, we might think about it. In the akhirah, Allah will occupy you with so much of goodness it's not going to come. Again to the moral, the whole topic of today, to instill hope in the hearts of the people by telling them, don't get bogged down with the past. Whether it's someone who did something to you, whether it's your own past, you need to look ahead, you need to move forward, and you need to understand, make the most of whatever Allah has given you. I end by telling you, my brothers, my sisters, those of us who have sinned against ourselves, and we have had a past, 
or we have done something evil. Turn to Allah before it is too late. Next week, we might not see some of us in the masjid. Next week. In fact, next week is too far. You can have a scare at any time. Anything could happen. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. You are good enough. You are definitely good enough. Just make amends. Get up, stand up and move. Move forward. Get up for salah. Ask Allah's forgiveness. If you falter once more, ask Allah's forgiveness again and again and again. And don't give up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us and grant us goodness. I pray that the next time we meet each other, we will be in a better condition. Today we are in a better condition than we were yesterday. Alhamdulillah. Please seek the forgiveness of Allah. I believe that there is definitely something wrong with us. That's what I believe. There is definitely something wrong with us. Imagine Mecca, Medina, the Masajid, everything being affected in this way. We need to revisit our link with Allah. There is definitely something wrong with us. And don't point the fingers at others. It's me. I need to help myself, improve myself. Life is so short. I have had a lot of people, and I'm sure you may have, whom I've known. Suddenly, they know more. Where did they go? Back to Allah. It's a matter of a few days and you could go. It would be a blessing to have started the day I died with Fajr and a little recitation of the Quran. And then with Dhuhr, if your death was written after Dhuhr. Or then with Asr, if your death, death was written after that and so on. May Allah bless every one of us and grant us strength, the ability to change, the ability to help others at a time of need and the ability to continue on the path with hope until we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.